Such a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Um, so look at the leaves over there, right? And the whole street was carpeted with leaves. And, uh, I just did that. It took me about maybe half an hour to clean all that up with that. Anyway, this is not a video about leaf cleaning. No, this isn't even a how-to video. What I'm going to do today is we're going to start the process of ripping out the rear suspension from my beloved 63,000 mile 1994 Miata. Now the problem that we have here, as I'm looking for my, my oh, there's my ramps. I don't want my ramps. We're going to need, <coughs> there should be a set of wheel chocks in here somewhere. There they are. We're going to start the process of uh, taking a look at what we have for suspension and what we need to order. So this car, you guessed it, needs suspension work. It rides, how can I describe it? This car drives like, it's getting to the point where it's driving like a Cadillac with no, with no shocks. Uh, it's quite pitiful. Um, so the original, the original shocks are past their prime. And we need to take them out. Okay. Alright. So I, uh, let's get rid of this board here. Now the jack point on this car is the rear differential. But you think I'm going to get to that with this jack? Because I don't. Let's try it this way. Uh, see that bolt head over there? Well, yeah. I think I'm going to have to go buy a new jack. Some bitch. I should have bought a low profile. What the hell was I thinking? I think I got it. If I could just lift the car up a little bit. Yeah, see, look at it. Look at this. There's, there's, those shocks are a joke. They were a joke. All right. Let's get this thing up in the air. So we're going to jack it in the air. Just get the wheels off the ground. And uh, once we do that, we'll be able to put jack stands. See, here we go. Uh, Some bitch, it slipped out. Let's try that again. Okay. Uh, looks like it's time for me to. A new jack. I think I'm gonna have to do that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I gotta, I gotta get, get a, a proper jack for this car because seriously, this is not cool. Ugh. There we are. Look at all the gymnastics we have to do to get this thing up there. All right. Once I get the, uh, the weight off the suspension, we're gonna loosen the wheels and take them off. Or maybe we wait until we get jack stands under it first. So we're lifting it by the power plant frame at this point. Yeah, that's a pretty firm jacking point right there. I think you're supposed to jack it by the pumpkin. I think that's the, the preferred method. But this works. It's not going to break anything. Okay, so I got one wheel off the ground, but not the other. See, right now it's not even, Steven, so. All right, now it's fully up in the air. Okay. Jack stands. Where do those go? <laughs> so I'm told. They're gonna go. 
right here in the corners. Right near the roof drains. Um, let's see if we can figure that out. The roof drains are... Right there. So, this is, I believe, where the jack stands are going to go. I'm not sure I like the way that's going to work. All right. I'll have to check. There's a chart that somebody created that helps you um, with jack stand locations on these on these frames. Anyways, allegedly this is beefed up. But you don't want to you don't want to put the jack stands on the pinch rail. That's not where they go. They go right about there in the corner. I think. Therefore, I am. So let's uh, let's work on that. Get it up a little higher. Yeah, that makes that makes sense. All right, I got the car up on jack stands. You can see where. You want it inside the pinch wells. There's a corrugated sheet of steel there. At least that's what I understand it to be. The car shouldn't have to go up too high, so I'm not too worried about that. Let's get these wheels off. I just want to take a moment to appreciate just how clean this car is underneath. Um, this car is 26 years old. It has spent its entire life in New England. We salt the roads, and it rains, and it's kind of damp, and oh, look at this. Factory shocks still have their, their tags on them. That's just incredible. Um, you don't see that. This is why I bought this car. This is why. Because this car has suffered, suffered, it has enjoyed a very easy life. Um, even the bushings are still supple. They're not cracking. They're not disintegrating. They're not degraded at all. Look at these brake lines. No cracks in them. Look at that. These hoses. Just perfectly good, solid car. This is stuff I applied um, because some of the factory stuff was coming off. But this is plastic. That's just a plastic panel. Um, what's beyond that, I don't know. I'm going to probably pull that off for inspection purposes just to see what's going on back there. But, I mean, look at these control arms. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take this panel off and I'm going to take the undercoating off of it and I'm going to clean it. I think I might do that. But you don't, you just don't see that around here. Look at these boots. They're not even... The bump stops, the bump stop and boop, boot assembly, boop, <laughs> the boop assembly is in perfect condition. The only reason we're doing this is these shocks no longer do their job. They just, they have no, they have nothing left in them. So, I mean, there's no play, there's no, and even these control, even these, um, these links, I'm going to replace the links. I'm going to do that because I just feel it's the right thing to do. Um, right now, this bar should not be under any tension because the car is in the air. The only time, this right here, this is your, your uh, anti-roll bar or your sway bar. And what its job is to do is when there's a difference in position of the rear end. So let's say this side is being pushed up as you're coming into a corner or whatever. What it's going to do is this side is going to push up on this. This is a torsion bar. It's going to push up on this bar, and then it's going to pull up on the other end. It's going to put a, it's going to pull the other side up to try to compensate for this moving up into the wheel well. So it's to counteract body roll, um, and they actually work really well. 
There's a front and rear stabilizer, stabilizer bar, anti-roll bar. Um, there's a lot of different names for them, but it all means the same basic thing. But just look at inside these little pockets and up inside there's just, there's still paint here. I mean, it just boggles the mind. All solid steel, all original. Unfreaking believable. But to see a shock that's 26 years old, it still has, it still has, a t I think one of them says 1993 on it. Um, but to see that in a car like this is just, it's rare, that's for sure. Anyway, so we've got to disconnect the anti-roll bar on both sides. And then we can start, um, start work. We're going to unbolt the shock from above. That'll drop this down. I don't believe we need to pull the link off. I'm going to find out in a minute if we do. But the good thing about working on a car that's in this condition is these bolts are still intact. There's no rod on them. We're going to do rear brakes. Um, these should be the factory brakes for this car. Um, these have, I don't believe these have ever been replaced. I wouldn't be surprised if they were, but I don't believe they ever were replaced. So, um, I know I had them bled recently. I had the, the fluid changed. But anyway, so the fluid's been changed. I just need to, I just need, I just need to get new brakes. Uh, these pads are getting down there. Look at these rotors. I mean, these aren't even rusted. It's just crazy. You don't, you just don't see that. Um, these boots, let's see how good they are. There's no, um, see, the thing about rubber components is they go bad with age. Usually, if they're not a very good formula of rubber. But there's still paint on, look at that, there's still green paint on that. Um, these usually dry out. But these are still good. They're not cracking. They're not leaking. We don't need to do boots on the car, on the axle, the rear drive. These are the. It's a rear-wheel drive car, so these are the dry shafts. These, uh, that's what they are. But there's no. There's not really any flakiness. You can't ask for a better, a better um, suspension. Condition-wise, you just you just can't. You'll never find it. Not on a car this old. Okay, so right now. The shock is disconnected. The only thing that you're seeing supporting the control arm are the bushings. The bushings are torqued in place under tension. Um, basically, the car is supposed to be laden, and then all the <clears throat> the bushing um, bushings are tightened in place. There, 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 and there. So it tells me these bushings are actually in really good shape. If they're still able to hold this car or this, they're still able to hold torque. That's a very good sign. Um, so that's that's actually impressive. So to get the um, the shock out, you've got to unbolt this panel here. It's held in place by a plethora of bolts. Usually, these get rusted out from moisture, like they just develop. But I mean, look, it just, it just I, every time I do any work to this car, it just blows my freaking ever-loving mind because um, I'm just not used to working on cars that are this old in this condition. Um, I mean, I've had cars that were five years old that didn't look this good. So that says something about how this car was cared for. Um, yeah, it really does. Somebody really cared a lot about this car at some point. And it was probably used to go to Sunday church maybe on sunny days. I, I don't know. Or just, you know, little short drives to the ice cream store was sold to me. And the guy that I bought it from, he never drove it. He bought it. He bought it expecting to make a killing on it. He um, he saw the values of NAs going up. He bought the car for steel and 
kept it in his um, in his little storage area for three or four years before putting it up for sale. We'll put this over here. Safe place for that. So here's the gasoline filler neck. That's nice and supple. Here are the two bolts that hold the shock in place. There's one there, one in front of the... I think you should be able to get to those with an extension. And uh, back, back there is... It's just amazing how much dust got in here. Being a convertible, you know, dust gets thrown around very, very rapidly. 12893 is when that was made. Galvanized steel filler neck. These rust out a lot too. This car, this car, I don't know, it was like the chosen one in the production line or something. A little tip here, you're going to want to loosen your um, your fuel filler and knock it aside. It makes it a lot easier to get to those bolts down there. Just, uh, yeah. Something to think about. Okay. So, in theory, this should just drop right out, right? Right? Right. In theory, yes. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Let's see what's going to happen. Okay, I could have done this one-handed. Seriously, it was that easy. All you do is just pull the strut or the sh the coil over up, press down, and lift, and you'll get it right out. Easiest thing I've ever done. Now, since this is the first one, I want to Let's take a good look at it. Look at that, looks brand new. But you can see, it's been leaking. Yeah, there's nothing in it. It's empty, oh wow, you know what? These are bad, we're gonna have to replace the bellows. And the bump stops, they come as one assembly, I believe. But the springs look good. There's no chipping or flaking of the paint. You can clean those up. And uh, our next, order of business is we need to remove these bolts but first we've got to do something that could kill us <laughs> we've got to compress these springs and I have a spring compressor let's see if they fit here's the deal um, not going to use this tool I don't trust it it's also not really sized right for this spring so I have it I pretty much have the spring crunched up as good as I'm going to get it and it's still under tension. So, I'm not gonna waste any more time with this tool. And look what's happening. Because the spring is so small, is the, uh, the coil above the one I'm latched onto is pressing down on the safety pin. Not cool. Uh, so this is just a normal, everyday, average spring compressor. So here's what I'm gonna do. I am going to find a local shop, pay them for an hour's of or whatever hour, half hour of labor, so they can pop these apart, put the new. I'm going to replace the um, the spring hatch, um, just because it's like, why not do that? Um, I'm going to pay the shop to do the job once. <laughs> but anyway, let's get this apart. Um, let's, let's just let's just get this compressor off of here, and we're going to take a better look at things. Uh, yeah, so based on what I'm seeing, there is nothing in these shocks to speak of. Uh, so, what we're going to do is we're going to pull the other side off, and um, I'm going to order the new shocks and the new hats. I'm also going to get new sway bar links and bushings, and we're going to replace all those just because we're here. Might as well do it. Um, and uh, I'm going to have them let me keep one of the shocks. So I can show you guys just how bad they really are. Um, these are made by Showa, Mazda Showa, and uh, 93, there it is, 93-1206. So, <laughs> unbelievable. I did not expect them to be this nice. And look at the bushings. No dry rot, no cracks, nothing. 
absolutely nothing wrong with these. Okay, so they're a little bit saggy, but not that much. I mean, this was under tension for 26 years. And you can see it's a little bit off center, but it's not broken. It's still tight. Man, this car is going to perform real nice when I get these replaced. You know what else is original? This rolling time bomb. This is the factory spare tire. It's not showing any cracks at all. Um, it looks pretty good. And it is currently filled to the factory spec of 60 pounds per square inch. Or 60 pissies for those of you Ave fans. This is an unused from 1993 factory spare tire that for some reason has a Pennsylvania logo on it. Why is that? Was this made in the US? Was this made in Pennsylvania? Not made in Japan. But they might, <clears throat> they apparently are fond of Pennsylvania for some reason. Anyway, look at that. Never used. Still with its sh shrink wrap. Or whatever you want to call that. Anyways, we're going to put that right there. So we can get to the other side. And those bolts are going to be right under here. Near the battery. Yes, it has a power antenna. Want to fight about it? Okay. So I'm going to get those bolts out first, just because I'm here. And, um... I'm going to get some pricing on some, uh, get a shop to do this. I'll get the parts ordered and we'll get her done. There you go. Easy peasy. Made in Japanesey. Okay. Let's see how this side looks. Yeah, these are good. These are fine. We're going to put new ones on just because we like to waste money, but that's okay. Suspension bushings seem to be in pretty good, pretty good sort. No clunking. No cracking. That's just how they used to make them, man. That's how they used to be. That's not how they make them anymore. Suspension bushings made today do not last like this. They just don't. I've got a, um, a split washer that fell down in this pocket. I'm going to have to maybe obtain another one. But, uh, yeah, it fell right in. I might be able to get it with a magnet. Do I have that flexi one in here? See if we can get it out. But seriously, guys, gals, folks, this is why I, I, I keep saying this. But you could do worse for your first project car. I got it. You could do worse than a Miata. Now, again, my situation is a little bit unusually, unusually there because this car yeah it's nice and tight there's nothing wrong with these bushings my car has been pampered for 30 years 27 years or however the hell old it is um so it hasn't it hasn't been ravaged by teenagers and wannabe race car enthusiasts and and just all the shit that these cars went through as they started getting older, you know, the first generation Miata started to get, you know, a little bit on the older side by the late 90s, mid to late 90s or so. You know, after they're three, four, five years old, you know, they're not really worth a lot of money anymore. The thing is, Mazda sold billions of these things, and for a good reason, they're a good car. But they're also easy to work on, and they're easy to modify, and they're easy, to, and they're just so fun. But, again, when these started getting older, losing value, 
young kids bought them. And they beat the crap out of them. So finding one that's in this good condition is... Actually, that's not true because a lot of these did end up going to older couples who kept them until they died. <laughs> and and then maybe somebody in the family took it over and, oh, look, it's grandma or grandpa's car. We're going to drive it on Sunday every once in a while until, you know, whatever. This is one of those cars. You know, this car was likely, you know, a grandparent's car or some older person bought it new and took care of it and then, you know, passed it along, sold it, whatever. And then after the car got to be about 10 years old, so this car was hit in 2006. In 2006, the car would have been about 12 years old. And it was in such good condition then that they took the time and effort to replace the trunk lid with a factory trunk lid. They replaced the bumper with a factory bumper. They, you know, they, they repaired it to where you could never tell it was ever hit, ever. They put the effort into it because they figured, well, this car has survived. You know, we're gonna we're gonna keep it nice. We're not gonna we're not gonna put the the Mako paint job on it. You know? So some of this car has been repainted. Um, they did some blending in the fenders, the rear the rear fender uh, rear wheel wells, and they did some blending. Um, the front bumper has been repainted but never repaired, so it was never in a collision in the front. But they did, they did kind of buff and smooth out the paint a little bit in some areas. So, But you, you can't tell. I only know this because I've looked at it like with a microscope and I can tell. Anyway, let's see what the other shock looks like. Okay, that would be this guy here. Let's uh, <clears throat> take a peek under the skirt. Oh, it's not so easy on this one, is it? But we're going to find an oily mess. I know it. So these bump stops are junk. The bump stocks and the um, bump stops. What is it? Stops. They're junk. They're not getting reused. See how easy that bellows was to, to rip? See, look at that. It's, it's tearing badly. Yeah. This one, this one's actually dry. Let's take a look. Yeah, look at that. This one's bone dry. This one might actually be good. I know it's not though. Let's check out this one. Let's uh, let's this. Let's kind of work this down. Up, down, left, right. Hold on, I'll, I'll be right with you. That's not letting me do it. Anywho. Um, we can know that there is definitely oil seeping out of it. Now shocks contain a gas rather than an oil, but they do it. There is oil mixed in with that gas for lubrication, so um, that's what we see leaking out of it. Yeah, it's leaking all out. Look at that. So yeah. All right. Anyway, long story short, it's got to come apart. I'm gonna save these. <laughs> I think I'm supposed to. Okay, so let's get some parts ordered. I'll give you the grand total of what we're going to buy. I'm only going to do the rear right now. And once the rear's done, depending on the weather, we're going to do the front. I may wait until the spring. I just want to get something done on this car this year. And in the summer, or in the spring of next year, we'll see what the front looks like. And find some good weather and we'll, uh, we'll tear that one apart too. I found a shop local to me that will swap the shocks over when I get the new parts. Um, they're going to charge me one hour of labor, which is $130. So I might contact a few other shops to see if they'll do it for a little less than that. I mean, literally, it's a five-minute job for them. Um, but then again, you know, don't uh, don't play with guns if you're not prepared to get shot. I guess is the uh, the mantra of the of the day. So. Uh, Parts Geek, I bought from them before, um, and they sell a variety of makes of parts, so I can get my my KYB shocks, which is what I wanted. Um, those are the ones that seem to be highly recommended, although these are the old box, so they're, they're old stock. 
so they're not going to be, I mean shocks once they're um, when they're packaged they have a very long shelf life so I'm not too worried about that for the price 55 bucks each that's that's pretty damn cheap and KYB is equivalent to what I've taken out so far I'm going with Beck Arnley sway bar bushings and TRW sway bar links um, these are known brands they're you know I would say they're good quality stuff and $252 is the total. My freaking mouse, I swear to God, this thing keeps cutting out on me. Bluetooth mice and Windows 10 don't play nicely together, I've found. Um, anyway. And no, it's not the power management settings. I've checked those over multiple times, and that's not that's not the issue. Anyway, $252, so $350. Bucks. Yeah, all in is what I'm... But about four hundred dollars, and that's doing all the work myself, except swapping out those parts. So that's pretty good. That's pretty good for a, a full suspension makeover for a twenty-seven-year-old car. That's that's pretty good, I'd say. Uh, the front will be a little bit pricier because I'm going to be doing ball joints at the same time. I'm going to well, we'll see how they look. I might end up doing ball joints. So okay, well, let me get these ordered, and uh, the next time you see me, uh, we'll be. We'll be hopefully installing these parts and getting it getting it done, getting it done right. Okay, so I did say earlier in the video that we're doing rear brakes, and um, while it's not necessary because the brakes on this car are in very good condition, um, I figured we're since we have to do the front brakes anyway, uh, I might as well do the rears at the same time while we have it apart, while the car is laid up. And the cost of doing brakes on a car at this stage, if you're doing it yourself, is minimal. If I recall, the parts, the, 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 because I priced about after I did the suspension stuff, I think it was like about 150 bucks or so for a set of Bosch quiet cast rotors and a set of Bosch um, ceramic, I think they're semi, semi metallic or they're ceramic uh, brake pads. They were, all inclusive about a buck fifty or so not a lot of money and when we're here might as well do it um, <clears throat> one thing I learned and I've never done brakes on a Miata but I've done brakes on a lot of other cars from a various from various makes Volkswagens Fords other Mazdas um, you know other cars and I've always compressed the caliper with a pair of channel locks or um, I have a nice big set of channel locks that I can use or um, a simple heavy-duty C-clamp, like a good-sized C-clamp, and that usually works. But on the Miata, it doesn't work that way. You can actually damage the caliper if you try to do it like that. Um, fortunately, I, I actually read the book before I tried it, and <clears throat> I learned that there is a there is a bolt right here. It looks like a bolt, but it's not a bolt. It's a cap, and you remove this cap, and it reveals a hex-headed screw. Um, although it's not really a screw, it it's like a bit that slides into something else, some other mechanism. Anyway, you turn that screw counterclockwise, and it will draw the piston back into the caliper body. I've never seen anything like that before. Um, I'm not a mechanic by trade, so maybe that's why. But that's how you retract the piston in a Miata caliper. Um, very easy to do, and... Uh, really doesn't take a lot of time or effort at all. So what I'm going to do with these calipers is I'm going to go out and I'm going to get some brake cleaner and I'm going to clean these really well, maybe with a brush or something. I'm going to leave them mounted, but I'm going to mask off a lot of stuff. We're going to mask off a lot of this stuff with, with plastic and we're going, to, we're going to do it right. But what I want to do is I want to paint the caliper bodies gold. I'm going to try to find a gold caliper paint. And I'm going to paint the um, the caliper frames black. It's going to look really, really cool um, when it's all done. So, stay tuned for that. But take a look at just, just another thing. You know, take a look at these backers. Look at this. I, I've never seen. I've never seen this. I, I've worked on cars generally five plus years old. I don't ever see them in this condition. Look at this. No rust still have the tags in the back. I mean, you just don't see them like this anymore. Um, 
I mean, look at this packet. I'm sorry, I'm 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 just mesmerized by the by the sheer condition that this car is in after so many years. It's just incredible. The other side's the same way. Anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at our original brake parts. I'm going to grab one of the rotors. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a pair of calipers and we're going to check the brake lining thickness to see just how bad or how good they really are. So here are the pads from both sides. They're kind of mixed up here. Um, the inner pads were a little bit more worn than the outer pads. Uh, let's see. Yeah, these are the inners. And this one, this one here, no, which one was it? Ah, this one right here. This is the one that was kind of the most worn. So a little uneven, but that's okay. Um, I did find that the brake caliber guide pins are a little stiff. Um, they do need lubrication. So we're going to re-lubricate those once we clean the calipers. And we'll, we'll get that taken care of. I'm not worried about that. But yeah, so I think that uh, I think this caliper right here might have been dragging a little bit. Um, so just a little bit. But um, the rotors, factory rotors, um, minimum thickness, eight millimeters. Let's see, uh, let's see how those look. Okay, now this is the fun part. Let's just see how good or bad these brakes really were. Um, I already know the answer, and that's they're actually good. Um, let's take a look at the lining thickness first. Now the factory spec, or the according to this Haynes manual, the spec is. Um, 0.04 inches. That's uh, 1 25th of an inch. And that is the minimum thickness that these pads need to be. Actually, you know what? I think they might be bad. Uh, let's take a look. So let's uh, switch our unit to, met uh, to standard here. We're going to make it easier to. Let's do. So we got our unit zeroed out here, or our caliper. We're going to just use this end of it. We are at 0.14, well within range. 0 0.13, 0.14. In, um, <clears throat> in metric, that's 3.52 millimeters. Now, whether or not that's... You can go either way. So, the spec is... Um, I, I googled this, and it should be two millimeters thick minimum. Now, what the thickness should be, and what it is, or to, in order to pass inspection, can vary from state to state. Um, so you, you have to be aware of that. So one state may fail these, well, nobody should fail. These are good, these are, for all intents and purposes, these are bonded pads, there are no rivets. So these being bonded pads, they they can go much thinner than riveted pads, as far as I know. So, if I rolled into a to an inspection station and they failed these pads, they are just trying to sell me pads. These pads are these are good. These can go right back on the car. I'm not going to do that because I'm just refresh everything. What the hell? I love to burn money. Um, not really, but you know, I just I like peace of mind and that you know whatever. Uh, <laughs> anyway, don't do as I do. Um, but no, those pads are good, even though they're possibly original. I really do think they are. Um, but, uh, you know, the new pads are going to be a lot thicker than that. They'll probably be almost, probably 25% thicker. Um, so there's a lot of life left in those pads. Now, the rotors, we know they're good. We know they're good. Why are we replacing them? Well, because I love to burn money, I guess. Uh, let's zero this out. Let's see how thick it is. Now, all rotors, drums, anything, um, anything like this, there's going to be a casting right in the rotor or the drum that tells you what the minimum thickness is. In this case, it's eight millimeters is the minimum thickness. So this can be machined. If you wanted to put these back on the car, you just bring them to a machine shop Put them on a brake lathe, 9.7 millimeters. So these have, these have a 9 point, if I squeeze it, because <laughs> this is a shitty tool, um, it's a, uh, let's see, am I getting it? Yeah, here we go, 8 point, 
at least nine millimeters thick. So we could shave a good half a millimeter and still be okay. That's one full millimeter. Well, no, if we did, well, we don't have to go for a whole millimeter, but we can shave, we can certainly shave these down and they're still usable. So, um, I guess what I'm saying is these brakes can go right back on the car and they'd be fine. They'd be safe, good to go. The fronts, I believe, are a lot thicker. At least that's what I was told when I had the car inspected. But I never took them apart. you got to realize that a lot of auto shops, if they're not scrupulous enough, they're going to look at your brake pads and they're going to say those are bad. you got to get new ones. And not many people are going to question that. They're going to look at the age of the car. And they're going to say, yeah, probably. See, the front ones don't look too bad either. But we're going to replace them. I just figure, it's peace of mind, why not? Doesn't cost a lot of money to do your own brakes, especially when you've got the whole car torn apart. You know. <clears throat> but definitely not necessary. I actually kind of want to put these back on now that I know they're, they're within spec, but I'm not going to. How much material has been lost in 60,000 miles? Well, you can actually figure that out very easily. So we measured the, um, the wear surface, the braking surface, at what? Nine millimeters? So let's see how much we've lost. And what we're going to do is we're going to measure the outer, the outer band here. Because the brake pads don't wear out this outer band. Okay, here we go. Okay. So far, 9.25 millimeters. So we've lost about 0.25 millimeters of wear material. That's, that's not bad. That's not bad at all. So, are they, now the other question is, are they warped? If I were to put these on a brake lathe, the first thing I'm gonna do is check for run out. That's whether or not the disc warps, it has any warpage to it. Um, there's, a, there's a gauge, a runout gauge, that's part of every brake lathe operation. And it's just gonna, it's gonna spin the rotor and the gauge kind of rides up against, against the disc. And it's going to show a needle. And if the needle starts doing this, and it's beyond a certain point, let's say it's beyond one millimeter of runout. In fact, the specs are right here. Uh, there should be a runout um, limit on these, but um, I don't see it here. Somewhere in the book, it tells you what it should be. But there's a limit at which it can be run out. If it's within that limit, then you can use the brake lathe to machine out the run out in the rotor. But by that point, the rotor is probably going to be at its minimum thickness, so it can never be machined again. Anyway, just thought I'd throw that in there. Good information to have. Um, I don't know why I hear a train in the background. There are no train tracks near my house. I hear it around this time all the time. Well, it's not like it's on the hour or anything, but weird. I don't know. There's no trains nearby. Any oozles. So that's the deal. Um, so we're going to put brakes on it. We don't need them. We're going to do them anyway. Why not? The car's worth it. So thank you for... Uh, Thank you for being part of this show. Ha <laughs> ha. I will be, um, got the parts ordered. I've ordered, um, I, or I ended up, I forgot to order the uh, strut mounts. Um, so I went ahead and I ordered some of those at the same time I ordered the brakes. Where is the train? There's no tracks near here. Yeah, literally like every every couple of days. I hear a train. I hear the whistle. I don't know where the train is. Do you know where the train is? Because I don't know where the train is. Ay, ay, ay. Okay. Uh, the other thing is, this car has an LSD for limited slip diff. Um, although I'm not quite sure how to verify that. Um, but I know it has it. I called Mazda, gave them the VIN, and they said, yes, sir, your car has an LSD in it. So... There is a lot of resistance. Cars in gear right now. There is a lot of resistance. And I think that is an indicator 
of there being a limited slip diff. If I put the car out of gear, let's see what that does. See if the drive shaft turns. No, almost. Yeah, it does, it does turn. Okay, but if I get under the car and I turn that drive shaft with my hand, let's see. Like, oh, it's, it's way up in there. Yeah. Not a lot of resistance. Anyway. Here's the other side. You see there's a little bit of dirt there. I like to clean this up. A little pressure washer. There's a lot of undercoating that I actually put on this car when I bought it. Here's the fuel tank. But look at these brake lines. Look at that. No rust. No rust. And the ground ground connector there. For the rear half of the, uh, <clears throat> the rear half of the electrical wiring harness. Original exhaust. That's the other thing I gotta do is I gotta take that exhaust apart. I know there's an exhaust leak. Um, I, I just, I can hear it when the car is cold. So I'm gonna have to, um, what I'm gonna do is put the car up on ramps. And I'm gonna do that probably in this garage. Just get it up on ramps. And I'm gonna do an oil change. And I'm gonna probably do the, um, pull the catalytic converter off and replace the seals on that. Pretty sure that's where it's coming from. So, yeah, the cat. See, the cat is um, <clears throat> it's bolted between two flanges, and I think that those gaskets are gone. So we'll have to do that. Get that done. Anyway, onward and upward. I'll let you guys know how things go once the parts arrive. Reassembly should be a breeze. I'm going to bring the. Um, I'm going to bring the shocks up to a local auto auto place and we'll get those uh we'll get those put it to, to put together. Can't wait. It's going to be exciting. Till then folks, you have a great day.